So welcome to the another video of data structures using Java. In this video, we will be solving a problem called as valid anagram. So let's check out what does a problem say is that. We have given a two string S and T and we need to return true if the string T is an anagram of string S. Now the question comes, what do you mean by anagram? So here I wrote the definition of anagram, which says that a word or phrases that can be rearranged to make completely different words. For example, if you see here, I have given a string S called as an anagram. And I have made the string t using the characters present in my s. If you observe carefully that the total number of occurrence of each character is same as that of total number of occurrence of each character in t. Only a difference is their position can be different. Here I wrote that in both the strings the number of occurrence of character must be the same and the position of that character can be different because you are trying to get this t by using the characters of s. You are not allowed to use some different characters or extra characters. We have to make use of character present in the string s. Right. So I hope so that you got the meaning of what do you mean by anagram. So simply I need to return true if both the strings are anagram of each other. Otherwise you need to return false. Now if you see carefully that this string is an anagram to this string because string T is basically obtained by the string S. Only a difference is the position of each character is different but their occurrence is same. See here A has occurred for three times, N is occurred for one time, G has occurred for one time and M is occurred for one time and R is also occurred for one time. And here n is occurred for one time, a has occurred for three times, g for one time, r for one time and m for one time as well. Which means the a has occurred exactly the three number of times, n has occurred exactly the one number of times, g has occurred exactly the one number of times, m and r is also occurred exactly one number of times. Which means I generated this t using the character present in my string yes. Okay. Now if you see carefully over here is that I can get know that a has occurred for one two times. B has occurred for two times, C has occurred for one time and E has occurred for two times. But here A has occurred for one time, B has occurred for one time, C for one time, D for one time and E for one time. Which means this T is not generated using the character present in my string yes. Because in yes A occurred two times but you are using exactly one A. B has occurred two times but you are using exactly one character. Therefore, this string T is not generated using the character present in my string S. Because if you are generating the string T, you have to make use of character present in my string S and all the characters should be present. Not one time or two times, no. All the characters present in my string S should be present in my string T. Only a thing is, as discussed, their position can be different. But total number of characters should be the same. So as we are discussing about total number of characters, how we can say that both the strings are of anagram of each other. So what I will do is, I will simply erase the occurrence present in my string T. And what I will do is, I will go on traversing each character present in my string T. But before that, I will get the occurrence of each character present in my S. So what I did is, first of all, I got the occurrence of every single character present in my string T. Sorry, string S. Now what I will do is, I will go on traversing every single character present in my string T. Okay, first I came across EN. So I simply reduce the occurrence of character N by one time. Then I come across A. Then I simply reduce the occurrence of A by one time. Then I came across G. So I reduce G by one time. Again I came across A, so I reduce my A by one time. Then I come across R, so I reduce my R by one time. Then I come across A, so I reduce my A by one time. And then I came across M, so I reduce the M by one time. And finally I can see that the, all the occurrence of character has turned out to be zero. Which means I simply made my T using the character present in my S. I simply made my T using the character present in my S. Because I am able to make this occurrence equals to zero using the character present in my string T. But if you observe carefully over here is that uh, if you get the occurrence of character present in my string S, yes, that is A equals to 2 times, B is 2 times, C is 1 time, E is 2 times. Now I will keep on traversing each character present in my string T. Now observe carefully that I came across A, so I simply reduce it by 1, so it becomes a number of occurrence as 1. Now I came across B, so I reduce it by 1. I came across by C, so C got 0. I came across by D, so D got, uh, let's suppose, sorry, so here D is also, here D is also equal to 2, so D got reduced by 1. Then I came across E, so E got reduced by 1. Now I am completely tower the string T. But if you observe carefully that still all the character present in my string S is not completely turned to the 0. Which means this string T is not made from the string S. Therefore these are not called as anagram of each other. Because if they are anagram of each other, what we say discuss that it should make use of character present in my string S. But the position can be different. But here, here the string t is not using all the character present in my string s, yes, right? So this was the easiest problem. Now let's move on to the IDE and say how we can write the code for this. So here, what basically we did is, first of all, as usual, we got the length of my string. Then I declared the hash, which is of size 256, and I filled all the occurrence to be zero. Then I traversed the string s, yes, 
and I counted the occurrence of each character present in my string S. Yes. Now what do I discuss? We traverse a character present in my string T and I started decreasing the character present in my S by 1. And finally, I traverse my hash table and at any point, the hash table does not have the value equal to 0. It means it, string T is not using all the characters present in my string S. Yes, therefore, I will simply return false. And if the, all the characters present in my hash is equal to 0, which means the string T is made using the characters of string S yes, and therefore, I will simply return as true. So this was again the easiest problem as we discussed. So just in case if you are new to our channel, do subscribe to the channel for more such informative videos. Till then, see you in the next video.